But a few things that I wanted to address from yesterday was uh, large groups. Some of you asked about um, handling and um, photographing special needs children, scouting locations prior to the session, posing men or you know boys together, window light, and pets. We didn't even talk about pets yesterday, adding pets into your uh, photography. So working with extended families, this was a really, this was a really fun group for me because it was, I think, like 27 people, 17 kids, right? So, and I'm going to take you through the entire session from start to finish. I'm also going to show you how I pre-scouted the location because with that many family members, it's easier to be at someone's home because we're working in such small groups going along that it might be a while before this family is up. It might be a while before that family is up or this kid needs a break. So it's kind of more comfortable if they have a place they can go. Um, this family had a beautiful home set in the side of the Superstition Mountain. Very proud of their home. They wanted me to come out and check it out. So we did, and the interesting thing is that all the areas that they were pointing out to me that they thought would be perfect were less than perfect. Um, because either the light or the time of day we're gonna be shooting. And it's interesting because clients will look out at a beautiful scenery and think, oh, that's a beautiful background. But just because it's great scenery doesn't mean it's a great background. So I walked around the house and I just shot different images of locations. And this is actually a pretty cool location. Um, right here is the mountain. So they literally had to cut the mountain out to put this house in. So we, there's really no direction of light coming from here. So even though she's like, oh, the side of the house is really beautiful. And I was like, yes. I mean, there's no real direction of light here. So I didn't want to use it. And then she brought me out back and it's a beautiful view and it's a gorgeous patio. Um, but for big family groups, it's not ideal because uh, the railing to me would be in the way. Um, it's hot, bright sun. It, you know, it, there's no open shade. There's no direction of light for me here. So even though it's a beautiful location, it just doesn't work for what I wanted to do. This is more of the backyard, and you can see the direction of the sun is it all in the wrong place at the time of day that we need to shoot because that's the time of day I went to look at the location. If you're going to look at a location, you should go at about the time of day you're going to photograph there so you know where the direction of light is coming from. It's a gorgeous yard. I love the columns. There's a lot of different things we could do. I love how the texture of the house here in the back, and that would be beautiful if this was an open shade, but it's not. So I thought, okay, that's not gonna work. So I went to the front of the house, and this is literally, the driveway is right here, and you come up, and there's a set of garages over to this side, and then another set of garages facing this way, and the front door is back here in the corner. And I was like, yes, this spot is perfect, because we have directional light, we have um, light coming from the background, we have columns to work with, and you can see this directional light flowing in would be perfect in this area. And so that's where I decided to shoot. And the, and the family was like, really? That's, that's not what I would have had in mind because they don't see what I see when I'm looking at this. So this is um, Ann and Harvey and we're using this spot. This is actually the front door and I'm kind of shooting in that direction because it adds texture, the lights hitting the glass on the door. It, it has some really pretty texture in it and it's just a beautiful direction of light. So I started with grandparents, did some individuals. This is the great grandmother. So, you know, you have great grandma in there, you have to take her portrait by herself. Um, the family had that cart right there and they added um, flowers and they planted in it for me. So that added some texture in my background. But I have this gorgeous direction of light and I have a, a silver reflector here and the kids were great. They were like, hey, can we help? Can we hold a reflector? And so, and it worked in small groups. So keep in mind this entire session took about an hour and a half, an hour and 45 minutes because that's about all the light that we have. So we're talking about doing five individual families, individual portraits of 17 children, the whole entire group, the parents with their children, the grand, great grandmother with all of her great grandchildren. There's a gazillion combinations going on here. And so I'm working at a rapid, rapid pace. You have about two to three minutes to spend with each individual person, if you, you know, think about it, because then you have to do all those groups. So anyway, so I love this portrait of her. And then of course I brought in her mom, I mean her daughter, to do portraits together, um, leaning in. Here's mom with all of her children. 
It's a little bright, it's not this bright, but anyway, um, but this is mom with all her children. You can see some of my triangles in here. You know, you can see my diagonal lines, triangles in here, triangles here, but I didn't really want to move grandma around too much because it's hard for her to get around. She was, you know, in her 90s. So just leave her <laughs> and work everybody else around her. So she's still in the same spot from when I photographed her originally, sitting in that same spot. I moved mom in, then I, uh, the, her daughter in, then I moved her out, then I moved all of her grandchildren in. And then I started with each individual child so that we had a portrait of each one. I basically used the ottoman of one of their outdoor pieces of furniture. It's a perfect posing stool, little kids fit on it well. Um, we're pretty much wide open here, 2.8, maybe 3.5, somewhere in there, so that we can get that nice depth in the background. And with you know this many kids, it's definitely a thing to say, okay, who wants to go first? You know, who, you know, so now you know which, you know, which kids are outgoing, which kids are shy. Some, you know, some of the kids would stand next to me and they would just want to hold my like tripod. Hey, can I hold this for you? So anyway, she's, this doesn't necessarily go in the order of which it happened, but it just gives you an idea of how li literally we're just jumping in and out. And the nice thing is that the kids can see what I'm doing. And when you're working with a group this big, it's ideal to stay in one place because you waste a ton of time moving from location to location to location. And so you kill a lot of time that you could use shooting by moving backgrounds and changing locations. So I set it up and then I move people in and out. Also, when we're making an album, everything looks consistent, right? So it's not a lot of different things going on at the same time. I, lo I love kids grabbing their toes. You know, and all the kids had like, you know, all different shoes on. I said, just take the shoes off, it's, you know. Kids in bare feet are so stinking cute. You know, putting her feet to the side, using the ottoman. Um, and this little guy, you know, we talked to his parents and will he be able to sit for us? Yeah, he'll sit. He doesn't really smile. So we kind of just, you know, I had dad standing over my shoulder. I'm not going to try very hard to pose him because it's not going to be comfortable for him. And so I put him where he is and let him get comfortable and then just photograph him. And he's actually super cute. <laughs> it's adorable. So she was a little shy one. And then, you know, after they see kids when they see their cousins and siblings you know getting into it and you know posing and having fun they're like okay okay I'll go you know so it takes a little bit of uh, a peer pressure look at that look at her toes I don't you just want to eat those <laughs> and this is our so this family ranged in age pretty similar to what we have today from six months to like 18 I mean that's a huge so with the older kids, I started going a slightly different direction because I wanted to create a little bit of difference between the older portraits and the younger ones. So I went more for some space, a little bit uh, uh, more of a horizontal than a vertical. And she was super shy, super shy at that stage. Had just gotten her braces, didn't want to smile. No problem, I'm not gonna force it. But she looks beautiful. And the, you know, one of the interesting things you can do also is for shy kids or you know, kids or even moms who aren't comfortable in front of the camera, um, I'll usually take my camera and show them the back of the camera and say, look what I just did. Wow, check it out. Do you like that? And they, you, you ever see this? They go, oh, oh yeah. Oh, that is actually good. Okay. And then everyone's like, ha. Ah. You know, because they need to see that they're doing okay and that you're actually getting good pictures for them to feel comfortable and then like move on. So especially sometimes teenagers, you know, show them in the back of the camera and like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I do look kind of good. <laughs> it's pretty funny. So, you know, 14, 15 year old boy, you know, we talked about this yesterday. Um, I like a little bit more of a serious face on him. This little guy is about 10. Um, you know, look at those, I love the braces. I just do, people are like, well, you know, I don't understand people wanting to remove braces. Why? Like, that's their age, that's who they are at this stage. Isn't that fun? Look at her, I love her. So by this time, you can see they're all having fun and there's kids standing behind me. Now the problem in this scenario is this. You're working with this many children and then you have a huge peanut gallery, right? Like so tons of people are standing behind you trying to get them to smile thinking they're helping you. But at certain times, the kids are generally like looking all over the place, especially little babies. Like they just, they don't even know where to look. 
So I usually have to say to parents, if they want to help get the attention of a child, I need one person. Everybody else has to go over there, I just need one, because if we have too many, I, they won't even be looking at me. So that's another way you often need to control the situation to say, okay, there's too many people screaming behind me, everybody go over there, I need one person. Who does this child respond to the best? You know, it might be grandma, it might be a cousin, it could be anybody, it could be dad. So that's another way of, because before you know it, you turn around and there's like a sea of people behind you and you're like, okay, that's just too much. Um, she was so cute. She, I liked her standing, leaning on the cart, but the column in the background creates texture. The light in the window creates another element of depth. I'm working with the families all together. You know, we have such a short time frame to photograph these and I, I don't, most of these, they're not retouched, right? So they're pretty much um, out of the camera, although this monitor is a little bright. But um, just having the kids lean in, I mean, they're young. She's got like that, what's, what is going on? This group, and they all had pretty good amount of children, each of the families. Look oh, that little guy, how cute, it's my diagonal line, you know. Um, so this family is definitely a challenge because he would only sit on dad's lap. That was difficult. It's hard to pose, but I put him sort of in the back so I can put the little ones in the front. It's probably not my ideal portrait, but it's the best I was going to get from this family in the time that I had. Remember, I'm photographing a total of 20 some odd people, 17 children, an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. You know what? In this moment, and this wasn't the main focus of the, uh, the session, the main focus was the big group, right? So, look at her toes. But notice how I'm always sort of, you know, covering pieces of mom's bodies with her children. We can literally see it in every image that I create that because it, it just hides anything that mom might not want to see. So by using her children, putting them in front, you know, it just it makes mom look good. And that's the bottom line, make mom look good, right? Make mom look good. Okay, seriously. I mean, the age range here, the, this is worst case scenario. <laughs> this is, oh, please help me. So this is great grandma with all her great grandchildren. And to get each of these like five, six, four, three, two year old, six month old to pose exactly how you want, not gonna happen. So I work with the older children first, put them where I want them to be because I know they'll stay there. And then you sort of just throw in the younger ones because that's all you can do. And gra you know, great grandma loves it. And you know, this little guy, that's, that's all he would, you know, that's it. That's, he would sit there and that's it. I, I couldn't get, I wanted to see if he, I could get him to sit up a little closer in the chair and you know, he get upset and so don't, don't worry about it, just leave it. So, and then uh, this isn't the final cut of the family. There's a doll back here. Um, so you can totally tell this isn't retouched. This kid's turning the wrong way. Um, her knees are too far open, so then I fix her knees. Then this kid's looking another way. Then he's going this way. So this image, you know, you just shoot everything. You're screaming. I got grandma behind me, right? Great grandma going, okay, okay, kids, okay. <laughs> And to get all of these different ages looking at you, smiling at the same time. Ah. <laughs> it was a... But here's another great example of a large family group. And I just want you to notice some of the details that we were talking about yesterday in the triangles and getting faces as close to the same plane as possible. We basically have three layers, but the way that they're stacked is really important to look at. Look how open the bodies are so that we can add people in between and we can you know, actually turn him in a little bit more. And look, where can we add more people? Remember yesterday how I was saying you should be able to add more people? We can put another person in here. We could, well, unless they want to sit in the water, but you could add another person here. If we had more young children, you can add little ones right into these empty spaces. So being able to puzzle and build those groups is really important. So this is a great example of that because our heads are at different heights. We've got triangles, 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 like, right? And it's all created really with the shoulders, legs going out in opposite directions, creating that triangular base. So they're all details that are specifically planned. It just doesn't happen. Fun, isn't that a fun group? It, it, looks, like, it looks like East Coast. This is Arizona. <laughs> it looks like the East Coast. Um, it's done in the fall. Okay, pretty ugly backgrounds. 
We talked a little bit yesterday about, you know, my, my community, there's these beautiful waterfalls and people are like, oh, can we have our picture by the waterfall? And, and I'm always like, it's not the best spot. And it's pretty, it's nice, it's nice to look at, but this isn't my favorite image of the family. It's nice, but this offers so much more. This is the location that when I go to, people go, oh, that the, and then they go, oh, but can we be by the waterfall? <sighs> and it's nice, but really it doesn't have that texture and the depth and the color. And so, and some people love this and that's cool. But for me, I prefer this, that soft background, the bright color coming from behind. I do really like the light that falls behind my subject. So it creates that background and that depth. Same family. I like my preference better, but anyway, all right. Boys and dads. We talked about this yesterday, right? And tough teenage boys. So I pulled up some images of just dads that I did with sons. Um, and I thought, because you asked yesterday, you know, do you put their heads as close together? And I was like, sometimes I guess it just depends on the relationship. But I love this image. Um, dad is sitting on a chair. I've got his knees separated and his son is sitting on a little stool in front of him leaning on his knee. So, and then look at how dad is leaning over his shoulder so that their faces are on the same plane and they're leaning in together. I love this image. I love this image. So this dad had recently been divorced and came to me and said, I really want portraits with my boys. And so we went out and we did portraits and they're, I love this because it, they're a close family and this totally relates. And yes, their heads are almost all touching. And it makes sense in this case because that's the relationship of this particular family. So as I was going through images last night, you know, kind of responding to the questions, I was like, yeah, men can touch heads. Boys can, you know, get their heads in close together. And um, I, I love that image. So I haven't seen it in a while, but okay. Just so you know, this is totally something I fix and post. I take logos out of shirts. I would never leave that. Um, so you can tell this is not retouched because I haven't done anything to it yet. But I had Jared here in front of his dad and then I brought his brother in over the shoulder. So many of the things that we talked about yesterday that we'll work on today, but related to some of the questions that you guys had yesterday. Okay, so this is Jared, you know, 12 year old boy. Don't smile. Mm, don't smile. Boom, that's mom's favorite picture. Big, big laugh. That's what she sees. When they're at home having dinner, you know, and kids cracking up, talking about school, that's what he sees. So sometimes it's just working that moment of don't smile, give me that serious face, hold it. Hold. And you can, he's starting to crack. And then, he, and then it's a great smile, it's a beautiful smile, but then there's, wow, that's expression. That's what mom loves to see. It's pretty fun, isn't it? So sometimes it's just like holding out for it, like digging for the laugh, not saying smile. You know, not that, oh, give, give me that big laugh. It's like, don't, don't smile. No, no, not that serious. You know, like it's, it's sort of playing with them. So this is Lisa and Jay. Um, I always try to get a portrait of mom and dad together. Cause I always say what, you know, ask any mom and dad when the last time they had their portrait just together. Most people will tell you their wedding. You're like, really? Your wedding and you have teenage boys? And they're like, yeah, it's been forever. And so I'll always make it a point to, Photograph mom and dad together as well. I love this. Look, look at their heads. Boys are leaning into dad. These are teenage boys hanging on their dad leaning in. This is a relationship. This is the connectivity of this family. So, you know, they asked me that yesterday. I was like, yeah, lean in, squeeze together. I don't care, boy, girl, it doesn't matter. Does dad look uncomfortable here? No, it's not. And the kids actually look pretty happy. And look at mom, she, this is her favorite image. This is the one I think we put up on the wall for her. We did a big gallery wrap and, um, and she loved it. Okay, grandparents, I love this because um, their granddaughter is just totally laughing, totally having a good time. And um, you know, grandpa's all very serious, but that's grandpa, you know, old, older, stout, you know, serious man, you know. Okay, so I love this image of uh, Jared again. And he's got that great look. Some kids can pull this off, some kids can't. We're using space. Um, and then this is the same family in a different setting, in a different pose, because some of you were asking yesterday about doing multiple poses with the same family. So you can start with dad in the center, bringing mom over the shoulder. 
now we have mom in the center bringing dad over the top and Jared's below and his brother is coming in this way. And I think I actually have, I might have the other image of that. Let me see. So that was that one and I just want to back up and show you that one. So two totally different images, same family, different pose, putting mom in the center for that, uh, for that one, putting dad higher for this one. Does that make sense? Love that. Look at the lean they have. Grandma and her granddaughter. I love this portrait. Totally love it. Okay, so this is serious, serious. And the parents love this image because it's so her, right? Because I have her like arms crossed over. I'm like, you know, serious, mad face. And that's totally what happens. So, you know, this to me is the key thing, getting those expressions we were talking about yesterday. Okay, I love this kid. His, this is Brennan. He's one of my favorite all-time kids ever. And he's like, hey, Michelle, watch me do this karate chop. I'm like, okay, sounds good. Let's do it. I love it. It's so him. <laughs> it's just him. Um, Tara, just portrait of her while we did the other session with her grandparents. See, Grandpa's still serious. Kids are smiling. Okay, I have to tell you, when I edited this session, I know this family quite well, when I edited this session, I cried the whole time. Because growing up with my grandparents, I never had portraits with them. I have random snapshots with them, but I don't have portraits with my grandparents. And that's one thing I really feel like I missed out on, because we just didn't do it then. And so whenever I have an opportunity to photograph children and their grandparents, I'm a mess. I'm good during the session, I hold it all together. I'm like, oh, this is great, and I love the relationship between them. And then as I'm editing it, I'm always like, you know, oh, I love this one, I love this one. And then when they come in and they see them and we go through them together for the sales session, I cry again. I'm like, to me, children and uh, grandchildren and grandparent relationships are just priceless. They're the best. So, um, so this really, for me, touches my heart. And then, you have a what? You want me to photograph your who? And you, how many did you say you have? <sighs> Crap. I used to say no to this all the time, right? Pets? <sighs> I was never a dog person. So people call, hey, no, and they come in for the, you know, do you think we could have the, our dog? And I was like, no, mm -mm. I'm sorry. I don't photograph dogs. <laughs> and then uh, my assistant who works for me now, Dawn, is totally a dog person. And she has Libby, who's a spazzy dog. and. So she, when we, I do her family portrait every year, she's like, we have to have Libby in the picture. I'm like, no, I don't photograph dogs. And she's like, yeah, no, we have to have the dog in the picture. I'm like, Ugh. she's like, you know, you really need to start photographing people and their dogs. Dogs are like part of the family. I'm like, dogs are four-legged two-year-olds. Like, no, <laughs> like, I can't do it. And so anyway, um, <laughs> because here's the, here's the thing with dogs. They obviously don't follow direction, and the only way you really get their attention is to yip at them or bark at them. And so, like, you're doing a session, and you know, you literally, I have to say to the family, okay, just stay smiling. I mean, just look at me. I'm gonna get the dog's attention, and I'm like, yip, yip, yip. and I'm like behind the camera making dog sounds so that the dogs look at me. And I'm like, please don't tell anyone I do this. This is totally embarrassing. Um, and then if you tell me you have more than one dog, I'm like, oh my gosh. Anyway, I have two dogs of my own now. Um, so I have become a dog person, thanks to Dawn. Um, but in this family, we photographed uh, multiple times and Aspen is you know, part of their family. And the dog is named Aspen because the parents met in Aspen. And so you know, there's a real connection there. And, you know, but seriously, I'm like, and the kids are kind of laughing at me because I'm like, yeah. I want a treat. You know, like, the things, I'm like, I don't have to do that to kids, like, but dogs, you definitely have to do it. And this, um, <laughs> this is funny, this, this little boy was um, autistic, and, you know, I've tried to, you know, have him just, hey, just wrap your arms around mom. Well, he's ending up choking her, which you can see here, which is pretty funny. And dad's like, what the hell's going on? And the dogs are, like, all over the place. And this is an outtake, but it's, it's funny, because... You know, and I love this tunnel and, you know, this beautiful wall and I've got this light. It's a great location. And uh, it, it, like I said, it's an outtake because the dogs aren't looking at me. But there I am, like, and the kid's looking at me and mom's like, I'm being choked. And the photographer's barking at our dogs. And it, it's total chaos. The only thing that could add chaos to today is having a couple dogs. 
Maybe a neighbor has a dog we can borrow. All right, window light is something that we didn't touch on yesterday, and I wanted to get to that today as well. So using reflectors. I use reflectors very much the same way uh, studio photographers would use studio lighting. Um, this is all window light, and um, you'll see them. I have my big panel reflectors that I use, silver, white. People asked about reflectors yesterday, so I want to kind of address that a little bit. Um, but I'll use reflectors like light. So I'll bring in a fill reflector to balance the main light from the window. I may pop a little reflector underneath the face to create that catch light that we have in the eye. I don't paint my catch lights in. I usually try to actually find them. Um, you know, this um, same thing. The, my window light in my studio came from subject left, subject right, camera left. And then I would always add in a reflector. If I wanted more dramatic lighting, I would leave the reflector out or even perhaps use that black panel we talked about and subtract some of the light. Um, I love, love, love this image. So sweet. And she shaves before. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. That's funny. Um, all right, so this family, all window light, reflector here to the side. Um, I just, I love window light. I'm a natural light photographer. I love beautiful, soft, natural light. Um, I will do anything to find soft, beautiful, natural light. I will do anything to enhance it. Um, so I really do prefer reflectors, natural light. Today, actually, the sun's peeking out a little bit, but I think we have a beautiful overcast day. Do you know what an overcast day is? It's God's softbox. It's the biggest softbox in the world, and God delivered it for me today. Softbox. You're like, oh, yes. And you ever have clients go, oh, it's so cloudy out. Like, yes, it's a giant softbox. <laughs> it's good, no problem. Um, see dad here, again, that same thing with dad leaning into his kids. And these are little kids. Look at that face. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love him. Isn't that cute? And he's like, yeah, not so much. And then everybody together. So see how we just add on to that group, which is kind of fun. So many of the same concepts we talked about yesterday, using it in the studio, same idea, same concept, um, puzzling heads, triangles, diagonal lines, adding mom right in there was a perfect space for her. We have, you know, actually diamond shape, which is kind of two triangles going opposite directions. This little girl is one of my favorites because her mom came in, her oldest son, has alopecia, which is um, hair, like autoimmune hair loss um, disease. And I did a whole uh, photo shoot for this alopecia group. And so the mom was in for her son and you know, I did all this stuff with the, the alopecia kids and all of them together. It was really a lot of fun. And she goes, you know, I have a two year old who I cannot get a photograph of. I have brought her to every studio imaginable and she will just not have her picture taken. It's a nightmare. I'm like, Bring her in, forget it, no problem. And so, and she was tough, you know, she was, you know, not wanting to like go near the background. You know, you have those kids who like won't even go near a background, won't even sit on a stool, won't, like nothing. They have, want to have nothing to do with it. So the windows that I had built into the studio at the time, uh, there was a back door and I had mom go outside. And so she went to the window to see her mom. Love this image. One, because I know she's looking at her mom and she's like reaching up for her. She, her, this mom was so happy because I had to do something that was appropriate to the two-year-old. I couldn't force a two-year-old to take a picture. You can't force a two-year-old. However, you can set up a scenario in which the perfect light, mom's outside, you know, a little bit of flowers. She's holding on to her blankie. Not going to take that away from her, right? And there she is. Beautiful eyes. Isn't that awesome? I know. And the mom was so happy. And I've photographed her family ever since then. This is my, uh, my banana, Anna Banana. Uh, this is actually done in my home since I moved from my regular studio to a home studio. And so this is done in my home. I have a big uh, double glass sliding doors going out to my yard, which I use as beautiful light all the time. And so it's just a window light and a little bit of a reflector, and that's it. So my little tomboy daughter who wore a dress for her first communion. <laughs> and it's so funny, too, because I'm taking this portrait of her, and I bought her those rosaries in, um, in Italy. And so I do this portrait, and she goes, you know, Mom, I think if we put the rosaries over my hand, that would look really cool. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let's do it. Um, some of the things we talked about yesterday, I found this image last night of this gentleman and his mom. And I, when I was posing them, she started laughing about something and just hugged into him. Remember how I said, you know, I don't really do too much to older people? 
What's there to do? Nothing. She has just a little soft filter on her because like I said yesterday, everybody needs a little soft filter. But other than that, I didn't do anything. She's just beautiful.